Praise God. Father God, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for all that you are, for all that you are. We love you. You have revealed yourself to us, Father God, throughout times. You have revealed yourself to us as a healer. You have revealed yourself to us as a financier. You have revealed yourself to us as Jehovah Jireh, our provider. You have revealed yourself to us, oh Father God, as a shield and a buckler. You have revealed yourself to us, Father God, as the king. We thank you. We thank you, Father God. Jehovah Makedesh, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shalom, the Lord our peace. Thank you for revealing yourself to us. You are the great I am. Thank you, Father, for all that you have revealed yourself to us. And as you reveal yourself to us, Father God, in more and more ways, we know, Father God, we will take your word and we will be committed doers of those things as you reveal them to us. Now I submit myself to you, Father God, spirit, soul, and body. Use my mind, use my heart, use my mouthpiece to minister your word to your people this day. And we come against any hindering spirit. Neither sleep nor slumber will take effect of these people this day. And any others who may be hearing us through any other kind of outlet media. We believe, Father God, we will be covenant doers of those things. And we covenant with you right now to give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory for every victory that will come out of today's session. We thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen and thanks be to God. <coughs> Bringing it all together, we have been removing the veil. Uh, I, just, I just learned just a few seconds ago, the Spirit of God prompted in my brain. Uh, for all of you all out there who have been watching us already and you've been reading it online, we misspelled the word veil. We've been spelling it V-E-I-L. That's veil. That's, that's lamb. <laughs> you know, it's supposed to be spelled V-A-I-L. But because the way it's uploaded and, and, and the way it's posted, we can't go back and correct the spelling of it, but we can, we can make the correction right now. Uh, so forgive us. It ain't like we didn't go to school. <laughs> we got a we got an education, but uh, we uh we it's veil. It's supposed to be V A I L. We have been teaching on removing the veil. V A I L. And I, I it never really dawned on me until I was reading in scripture, and I saw veil. I said, oh, Lord Jesus, can't believe we did all that. You know, because I'm the bigger, I'm, I mean, I watch over it mostly than anybody else uh, here. But when we put it on there, it's veil, V-A-I-L, not V-E-I-L. Now it's moving the veil, removing the veil, V-A-I-L. So I'm going to let that go. I apologize. We know we spell, we know how to spell y'all like that. But we have been teaching on bringing it all together, um, bring it all together. It is a subtopic of fulfilling your function to purpose. Of bring it all together. We are the body of Christ. 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 Now I'm saying that and some of you all are hearing it and you say, well I know that. See, and, and, and that is where and I, do, I will never ever debate the Word of God. I, know I won't do that. If I see when I'm discussing different things with people and reasoning with, their, with their different believers, if I see it's about to turn into an argument, I'll just stop talking. Somebody else caught me on that the other day. We were, we were discussing some things with somebody, and they said, well, I already know he's right. He just stopped talking. 
I mean, I mean, it's not their fault. It's not the fact that I'm trying to be right. And I said that to him. I said, but I can see that the veil, V A I L, is still over some people's minds in certain areas. They're just like the veil might be over my mind in certain areas, but. Like, you cannot tell me, just like when we taught on this past Wednesday night, you cannot tell me that we are post-tribulationists. You, you can't tell me that. Uh, that we're post-tribulation, for those of y'all who was not out here, some of y'all who haven't heard it, that's, we gonna get stuck. God gonna, uh, um, the great tribulation is gonna start, and then we gonna, God gonna let his body go through some stuff and get beat up on to chastise us then, once he feels as if that we have suffered enough, then he'll snatch us up out of here. No, that is not God. That, that is not God. Why would God allow his body to go through that? We are the body of Christ. The Bible tells us that in the book of Isaiah, that the chastisement of our peace was put on Jesus. We found out that Jesus was made to be our sin. We don't have to take the punishment for that. He did. So why would God leave us? And now God do admit, man does have a lot to pay for. But Jesus paid for it. Only way that you would have to pay for anything, that's if you still choose to hold on to that lifestyle to that old way of thinking, that old way of doing things, then you got to suffer the consequences behind that. But, I know, Jesus, you took it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for taking for taking the punishment for me. Thank you. I, oh, glory, I repent. I repent, Lord. Like I found myself repenting from some other, some dumb stuff just the other day. And it just, just you know, you constantly... Checking this mind, man. This mind, it, it, it's mine, and connected to this thing right here. This mind and this thing right here. And uh, these, these lips and these tongue. You, you want to smack both of them at the same time. Um, I mentioned earlier before our service even started to my congregation <laughs> that me as a man of God, or me as a husband, let's just say me as a husband, and been married for quite a long time now. I have no business even thinking about uh, old feelings that was connected to some other relationship that I've had in times past before my wife. I ain't got no business thinking about that. That's a dishonor to God. That's a dishonor to my wife. It's just, it's just not going to do it. I have no business. And so when those, are, if I'm at work, I'm, if I'm at work and I'm making doing what I do at the job and, and I'm at the command and the director people and all of a sudden you ain't even thinking of you you ain't trying to think about that I've learned sometimes the thoughts come from all different directions the thought of jump in your head and you're like you can't control what you think yeah you can because you got a computer up here man it's better than any computer that you will ever be able to make in, in earth why because it was created by man and then this mind, it holds information. It holds information. If you sit and think about it long enough, it'll come back. If you if you got control for you got some reasonable control of your thinking, it'll come back. And sometimes it went, may not come back. And that's when you got the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit will bring back to your remembrance those things that you need to know. He said he he actually he said, hey, but sometimes I'll be like, Holy Spirit, I'm sorry. What did you say? I remember hearing you say it, but it slipped my mind. I, I forgive me. Would you please say that again? And he'll, he'll tell you. So with this thinking, you be at work doing some stuff, and all of a sudden the old feeling come up of an old girlfriend, old boyfriend, or something. And all of a sudden, but you with your with your spouse now, and, and you you like, hold on. No, Satan, you a lie. No, I'm not gonna think about that. No, you a lie. I, I Me, mean, I'll bust him out in a minute. Shut up, boy. Nobody ain't talking to you. I don't know who you're talking to. I ain't talking to you. Am I talking to you? When well, no, well then, shush. I don't worry about who I'm talking to there. He's just crazy. No. No, I tell because I know I'm not going to sit up here and let him play in my brain. 
What's that got to do with all this? It's a whole lot, man. So I'm talking about we are the body of Christ. And we as a unit must come together and start learning how to work together. Must start learning how to work together. Must start learning how to work together. We must start learning how to work together. That's why God introduced to me about removing this veil. Removing the veil. Because as you get Baptists, you get Pentecostals, you get Catholics, you get First Presbyterians, you get Lutherans, all of us you know, you know, this is from the uh, Church of the Latter day Saints of the Lord of Jesus Christ. You know, all of us, the whole the main key thing wrapped around everything that we teach and everything we talk about is all of us, Catholics, Baptists, Methodists, First Presbyterians, Lutherans, and everybody else, you know, the Church of Jesus, Latter day Saints, and blah 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 blah. What what's the what's the main entity of everything we, we talk about? Jesus. But yet at the same time we're all separate. It ain't no it ain't no separate body of Christ. It's only one. See? It's all it's it's only one body. We found that out. Even though we all differ. Hold on, I don't mean to do no re, re, rewind. I'm not trying. No, I'm not gonna go back and do nothing. We're down too far this now. It's been captured on video. Go back and look at it. Go back and look at it. For all of you all who have been taking notes, go back and read your notes. We are the body of Christ. We talked about the different gifts. We talked about the different functions, about how, how all of us are coming together. Now, look what it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3. And um, this is where we this is pretty much where we left off the last time. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Look what it says. Because I'm not going to do nothing. I'm not going to do any review. I just this just brought this, bringing the thing together, man. Look what it says. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, here you go. Here you go. <clears throat> Look at verse. It would do you some justice to go read the whole chapter. But let, let's look at uh, verse 2. No, verse 1. Let's start verse 1. Do we again, do we begin again to commend ourselves? Or need we ask some other's epistles of commendation to you or letters of commendation from you? In other words, say, hey, I don't need, do, I, do I need to go out and get any kind of uh, book or some kind of certificate or some kind of, uh, uh, I, I got five degrees. No, I don't need to do anything about all that stuff. I went to college for 30 years, okay, and I got two doctor degrees, okay. He said, we ain't got to do none of all that. Do we need to do that? He said, what did he say in verse 2? Ye are our epistles written in our hearts, known and read of all men. And that's Paul talking. Paul was a Sadducee. He was a member of the Sanhedrin. You know, the members of the Sanhedrin, based on Christian history or biblical history, said uh, uh, those guys, they had to be married. They had to be married. They had to go. They had to learn the letter of the law. Paul, he learned the letter of the law. He knew from, Mal from Genesis all the way to Malachi. He knew it like the back of his hand. But he had the veil over his mind. But as he began to, the, the God himself, Jesus, re, began to remove the veil off of his thinking, he realized all the stuff when he was persecuting Christians under the old covenant, or on, 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 on the, on the, uh, when he was persecuting Christians under the old covenant, because he was in the new covenant, because Jesus had rose again from there by that time, new covenant had started, his mind could not connect the Old Testament to what was being introduced now. You all have heard me say when Jesus was in the earth, he not only had to fulfill and live out the old covenant, he now had to also introduce the new. Now that's a tough job. He And Jesus did that. 
he did more than just come and die and raise him because if he would, that's all he would, that's if that's all he needed to do was come live. I mean, come get to a certain age and then die. Why is it that he had to preach and teach for three and a half years? Why did he have to do all that? He didn't. He can, he was introducing this new. So look what he says. He said, "You are our epistles, written in our hearts, known and read of all men." You, he said, "As I've been teaching it to you all, other people began to see this new life. How the veil, V A I L." <laughs> Has been taken off your mind. Look what he says this. Three verse three. For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in fleshly tables of the heart. He said, Everything that you've been doing, it ain't just based on tables of stone. He's making references to the Old Testament or the Ten Commandments. Or all those rules and regulations that was written. He said, what he said is, but in fleshly tables of the heart. Of the heart. The what? The heart. Why? Because the Spirit of God lives in you now. Now you begin to listen to what the Spirit of God is saying. Now he's not gonna go, God is not gonna contradict anything what the Old Testament says. But he what, what did he say? Uh, uh where, where is that in the book of Deuteronomy? Where God begins to teach us line by line, precept upon precept, line by line. God takes one God, God knows about all six hundred of other twenty commandments and them things in under the Old Testament. The root God knows about all of them. But he know no one person can obey all of that at one time. He know that because we're imperfect. So God, line upon line, let's take this one thing first, Ivory. Mastered it. Praise God. Yes. Before you know it, you in number two. <laughs> God will quickly move. And some people, as uh, depending on you, you'll begin to learn a bunch of all at one time. That's why, and Paul, God does that from the inside of you. I promise you, if you do it, if you listen to the Spirit of God in you, if you're born again, and God begin, God begin to show it to you, you'll begin to make leaps and bounds. Sometimes learning them 620 commandments it, 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 out of the old covenant, it takes years to figure all of them out. That's why most of the Sadducees and Pharisees, they was already old. <laughs> They were already old by the time. And a lot of them still were messing it all up. A lot of them still messing it all up. He just said, Jesus, you ain't even 50 years old. And you knew Abraham? Jesus said, before Abraham was, I am. Hold on, you ain't even 50. I'm, a, I'm 75 years old. You look, you look, youngster. I've been living here on the earth. I got so much experience on you. No, Jesus mastered all of them. By the time Jesus was 30-something years old, early in his late 20s, he had mastered all of them. He mastered all of the scriptures. That's why he never committed a sin. He never committed one sin. Never transgressed one scripture at all. Never went against not one of them. He started learning that by way back when he was 12. Okay, here we go. What, look what it says here. Look what it says here. Get to, get to the point. Watch this. What it says. And such trust have we through Christ to God word. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. No, he said, I'm not trying to be braggadocious or trying to talk about anything about what I'm doing. My sufficiency is of God. God said, take this veil off your talk to, take this veil off your brain. Watch what he said. Drop down. Look what it says. Drop down. Uh, verse 10. For even that which was made glorious had no glory in this respect by reason of the glory that excelleth. What is he even talking about? For if that which is done away was glorious, much more that which remaineth is glorious. Hold on. What is he? Where you from? Hold on. Keep reading. Keep reading. Seeing then that we have such hope, 
we use great plainness of speech. He's referring to the Old Testament. He said the Old Testament was glorious. Yes. You all heard me say this. And many, many other women, women of God are learning this one as well. And I can see them teaching it as well. The Old Testament was the laws, the Ten Commandments, especially just take the first ten. They were a perfect law. It was perfect. Only difference is, man under the old covenant, or at that time, was a not regenerated man yet. Remember when Adam committed high treason against God? God separated himself from Adam. Now here Adam is in a fallen state, separated from God. God had to put things around Adam just to protect him. Had to drive him out of the garden. Had to put up a flaming sword uh, with an angel to keep Adam from getting back into the garden. So that he wouldn't eat off the tree. God was protecting that boy. Now here Adam is out there separated from the life of God. But God in his infinite wisdom, he still took care of Adam. Adam lived to be, was it, 800 some odd years old? He said he, he lived and, 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 and he, he had children come in. But you know, all hell began to come into the, into the world now. Because of what Adam did. His, his oldest son killed his younger boy. And, and based on the new movie Noah, Cain, you can see Cain's descendants, they all acting crazy. It had to get to the point of Genesis chapter 6 where God said every thought that man had, every thought, not just the actions they thought, was evil. So God had to wipe everybody all out. And look, look what he says here. He says the Old Testament was glorious. It was glorious, but imperfect man can never keep something perfect. It cannot do it. We cannot do it. As much as we try, we cannot do it. We cannot do it. But look what he says there. Look what he said. Look what he said. Verse, four, verse 11. For if that which is done away was glorious, much more that which it remaineth is glorious. Seeing then that we have such, we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech. Notice he said, we, we have a great hope. We have a great hope. No, he have a, what, what, what is this great hope? It's referring to this new life in Christ Jesus. They had no real hope under the old covenant. Why? Because every single year they had to show up and repent of their sin. They had got to the point to where they just thought that they can commit sin. And they just show up every year at the tabernacle and kill these ten chickens and ten doves and five rams and two goats. Just to repent, just for repentance. And they thought that that made them perfect. And that's that's never going to make you perfect. Book of Hebrews tells us that. Hold on, look what it says here. And I'm not trying to, it almost sounds like I'm fussing, but I'm really, really not. The, the whole point that we're trying to get, we're trying to get you to get God, help, ask God. And we're asking him, and he's helping us to take this veil off of our thinking. Because... If the veil does not remove from our thinking, how can we come together as a one big unit? How can we come together as one big unit? All of us Baptists. What the book of Galatians says, there's neither Greek nor Jew, nor bond nor free. And I like to say, I like uh, other scriptures say there's neither uh, uh, no barbarians, no black, no white. Nothing, nothing, there's no Asianese, no Chinese, no nothing. All of us, are, if we all believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, all of us, the Bible even tells us that we should especially do good to those that are of the household of faith. But us, the household of faith, us as believers in Jesus Christ, a lot of us keep arguing. Thus, therefore, the world like, well, what makes you better than me? Because you believe in some higher power. That's how they, that's how they uh, keep the veil across their thinking. It's just a higher power. You go to these AA meetings. 
you know, we're not going to make anybody confess. I, I, I'm a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, or he's a Muslim, or he's a this, or he's a that. That's their higher power. That's to help them get over this addiction of alcohol. No! That's sin. God will help you get over it, true enough, but now you submit yourself to a higher power. For a long time, my higher power was sex. Women, give me all the women, and I found a way. Whether I had my own, I had my own girlfriend, or I just went out and bought me one for the night. See, I'm just putting it out there. So, why? Look what it said. That was my higher power. Make me feel better. No, my higher power now is Jesus Christ. Look what he says. Verse 12 again. Seeing then that we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech. And not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not, not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. He said, we... Let's read it again. Oh, Lord, could I, I, just, I just got this. Look what it says. And not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. Hold on. Him Moses is, got this veil over his face. What was the veil doing? The veil was to protect the people because Moses was in the presence of God all the time, and no, we've already established that when you in the presence of God, he is going to leave an impartation on you, on the flesh. He's going to do it. He's pure light. That's why here I am. Now, you see a lot of older people. I'm just going to use them as the example because it's, it's other scenarios as well. You see a lot of older people who do spend a lot of time in prayer, in worship, they get into the presence of God, and you can see, even though they might be a hundred years old, they look like they'd like 70. God is constantly rejuvenating and renewing their strength. And in a glow, they have this glow about them. People say they sometimes people say they see it in me, and I've been thinking about I'm going in the mirror like, you're looking for it. <laughs> I can't see it though, but I know other people can. I remember when I first rededicated my life back to Jesus Christ, and the very first time I went back to church on a Wednesday night, and I saw my pastor, and I hadn't seen my pastor in, oh, oh, three, four, five years. The last time I had seen him, three or four, five years, and over the course of the three or four, five years that I was gone, because I saw him out in public and stuff like that, because it's the restaurant I used to work at, uh, he used to come in all the time and eat lunch. But my mind, I just saw him, hey, Pastor Hollow, hey, however. And he knew me, I knew him, but that was about it. But then when I rededicated my life, the veil was being removed. And I remember sitting down in church, and I saw him, and I was talking with him, and, 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 and all of a sudden, and he, he getting service over, and we were talking. It was almost like he was moving in slow motion. And he had this bright glow about him. And I was like, man, I must be tripping. I'm, I know I'm not high, maybe he high. <laughs> and I'm like, I, I saw it. No, since then, I haven't seen it. Since I, I haven't seen that. But I know it's there. God showed, God showed me his presence on him. The veil was being removed off of my eyes. And here the, here the people is with Moses. Moses had his veil to protect the people. But then the people, only thing that they saw was Moses. And I said, hold on. This dude, hold on. So they, they find themselves covering up because they can't look him. You know, some people just can't look straight right in the eye. And it's like him. Couldn't look Moses right in the eye because they glow. But what was going on? Look what it says here. They, as the, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. It's not to say that the Old Testament has been abolished and taken away. But God was trying to transition them over to a whole nother way of thinking. That's why, look what it says here. But their minds were blinded for until this day 
remaineth. The same veil untaken away, uh, untaken, oh, untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. This whole new life that's in Christ, it did not say Jesus there. What did it say? It said Christ. It said Christ. It said Christ. Which is always when you read the word Christ is referring to the body of Christ. We're all one. We're all one. The veil must be removed. Now question. Out of all the churches that you all have ever been to. Or any one of you all out there. How many of you all have heard this? Exactly. Nobody. But yet at the same time it's being taught. It may be taught from a different perspective. It may not be coming straight down the pike, like the way like we're doing right now, or it may be taught in little bitty examples. But here we are as a whole big one unit, or call we call the body of Christ. The Catholics got their way of teaching. They got catechism. They, no, the Baptists got this. No, women, the Baptists, women, 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 they they have to wear a dress. You cannot cut your hair. You cannot do this. They're trying to come up with different ways of living holy, living a, a righteous lifestyle. And all you need is the Spirit of God on the inside of you. Watch this. Watch this. Are uh, you there in Corinthians? Uh, 2 Corinthians? Uh, look at chapter, uh, chapter, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Flip over. Well, look what it says here. Look at chapter 4. Uh, verse 6. Verse 6. Look what it says. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness have shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Hold on. We just talked about Moses with this light. Look what he did. For God commanded the light to shine out of the darkness, have shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. In the face. So now this light is coming out of darkness. Think about it. What does the Bible say? That we were translated from darkness to light. And as we as one big unit come together, we all have lights. You have the light of God in you. God, by God, Jesus said, let your light so shine before men so that your good works can glorify God. If we all come together, think about it, you take this one light and you take this one light. And you put two lights together. What is it going to be? It's going to be a brighter light. As we all come together, look what happens. Look what happens. This glory of God will shine through. Look at me. Look at me. We come together as one big unit. This light will shine through Jesus' face. He's our head. light, his light, and all these lights will shine through the face of Jesus Christ. Look what he said. Look what he says here. Verse, verse, uh, verse 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. What treasure? He's talking about your born again spirit. There are a lot of Catholics out there who are born again. And there are a lot of Catholics out there who ain't got a born again nothing yet. They just going through the motions. Some of them may be high priests 
in, 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 in the faith. And some of them might be just regular old Catholic people. The people who just show up for work every day. But he says, so all, the, all of us, a whole bunch of people who Baptist, some of them born again. Some of them not, not born again. But he said, all of us have this treasure. This treasure. He's talking about our born again spirit. In us. And God says, he, the, this, the, the veil needs to be removed. Back up, you're in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Look what it says. We read this last week. Look at verse 3. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded, used that veil, the mind, blinded their mind, using the veil, covering their minds, which believe not, least the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. We preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus, the Lord. And ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake. He noted, how many of y'all ever stood up here and you hear me teach, well, this is what I want to do. This is how I feel. This is how I believe. This is what I think we should get done. This is what I am, am motivated by. This is what I, have you heard, what, me, I, I can't do nothing. In him, in him I move. In him I breathe. In him I have my being. I understand now why King David made a statement. Lord, how can you just then create me to make me do right? Make me do it your way. God don't want no robot. Come on. Look what he said. Go back over to uh, chapter 3. Watch it. Watch it. He says this. Verse 16. No, verse 15. But even unto this day, but even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, it shall turn to the Lord. It, but it, when it, when it shall turn to the Lord. What is the when it? We're going to talk about that in a second. The veil shall be taken away. What is the it? Your soul. Your soul, when you make a decision, remember your born again spirit. You your born again spirit, he's in there, but it does not house your soul. Your born again spirit and your soul is connected together. Once you make a decision, which is in your soulical area, because that's what's in your soul. Your soul is made up of three different three different entities. It's the, it's the mind, the will, and the emotions. The will is your decision maker. I choose to eat Reese's and peanut butter together. I choose to drink a Pepsi. I choose not to drink a Pepsi. I choose to drink eight Pepsi's. I only choose to drink one Pepsi every two days. I choose to eat green beans and vegetables. I choose to do that. Or I choose to eat five cheeseburgers in a week. See, that, that's your will. When it, when your will turns to the Lord, that's when God is going to remove the veil. Go back and read Moses. The Bible said, when Moses, when Moses was out there, in the, and he was out there with the sheep, taking care of the sheep, and Moses saw that burning bush, what did the Bible say? When Moses turned, to see what was going on. Moses' decision was in effect. His decision man, when he turned to see what the burning bush was, what was going on, he could have said, it wasn't nothing to see a burning bush out in the desert. Why nothing? It's just because it's the desert. Bushes burn up all the time. It's so doggone freaking hot. I did say freaking. But if it's so doggone hot out there in the desert, and guess what? Moses said, hold on. bushes on fire, but it's not being consumed. He could have said, strange. That's what they did. Oh, that's when Jesus, when God was speaking out of heaven, and all of a sudden, when they heard, he said, this is my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased. And the people were sitting around, and they listened to him, and they said, we have heard strange things today. Moses could have said, strange. He turned to see. As soon as he did that, God spoke. 
You don't want this veil to still be in your mind. You, you don't. You don't. Why? Because now you're stuck at the front door of salvation. You want to get up and start moving out through the rest of the house. You want to go find out what God is cooking over there in the kitchen. Don't and because sometimes fear will paralyze you. No, no, I, you don't. You don't know what's going to happen, Alvin. Man, I am not going to live in fear. I'm not going to do it. God taught me how not to live in fear on the streets of Chicago and on the streets of Memphis Ten. He taught me to not live in fear. I'm not. I'm not gonna live in fear. I'm not gonna live in. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. Afraid of this. Afraid of that. Afraid of who. Who gonna pay that? And afraid of who that. And now, now some things may just come up, and it may make you want to grip yourself for a second. But that's when you use your faith. No, Satan, you a lie. You a lie. My God shall supply all of my needs in the name of Jesus. I refuse to live. Ivy, you don't know what the future holds. Are you right? I don't know. But I have read the word. And I know the just I should live by my faith. I'm not going to be afraid. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not. I have opportunities to. I'm just choosing not to take that road. Last verse. Look what it says here. What, what is it? He's a verse, verse 17. Now the Lord is that spirit, capital spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is what? Freedom. Freedom. Once the veil is removed off of your thinking, whom the Lord has set free, whom the Son has set free, is free indeed. Freedom comes to pass. You begin to see. Hey man, I've been missing this this whole time. When God first started showing me how to live by faith, I sat up there and heard my pastor teach on that stuff, and I was like, okay, and went right back to doing what I was doing before. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image. From glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. You go from this state of being afraid to this state of not being afraid. You go from this state of not having any trust. You go to this state of trusting all. You go from this state to not bearing anything. And you go from this state to bearing all. And God will be working through you because the veil is being removed. And now you will begin to see that all things are possible to them that believe. You'll begin to see that. Why? Because the veil is being taken away. And us as one big whole body, the veil must be removed. It has to be removed. It has to be removed. Otherwise, we're going to be in a whole heap of lot of trouble when we get the glory. Because the Baptists going to want to just hang out with the Baptists, and the Pentecostals just going to hang out with the Pentecostals, and then the Catholics going to hang out with the Catholics, and the God is going to be like, I know I didn't call. What, what the world going on up here? I know this is what, not what I planned on. He already had one big ruckus in glory, and he's not having another one. So we all, now people, all of you all out there, say, Father God, I'm sorry. This is my brother in Christ. That's why you don't see me. I, you, you tell people all the time. I, I tell people, I mean, I tell people all the time, people who do see me. That's your brother in Christ, man. Love him. Forgive him. Forgive him. Remember how long it took for you before you decide to get it? Come on, man. It's your brother. It's your sister in Christ. This is good, man. This is good. This, this, we, we, this veil must be removed. Now, Satan, we come against you right now in the name of Jesus. We bind any hindering spirit. And we ask you, Holy Spirit, to do work with people's intentions and work with their hearts so that they can turn to you. And the veil can be removed. Be removed, Father God, so that they can see this liberty in Christ Jesus. 
And we know, Father God, that this liberty is not supposed to be used for maliciousness. But we, it's supposed to be used to your glory. Thank you, Father God, for revealing this to us so that we can walk in your victory that you have provided for us. We thank you, Father God. We love you and we appreciate you. And any one of you all out there who, who have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord, just repeat this after me. Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I believe in my heart. I confess in my, confess in my mouth that Jesus is Lord. I believe that you, Father God, raised Jesus from the dead for me. I make you my Lord and Savior. If you just prayed that prayer and you meant it, email me. Let me know. God is your Father. Jesus is your Lord. And Satan is a liar. Hmm. Glory to God. Let me know. Let me know. We'll send you some information out there. And, we, and our information, just, just email let me know. Send me your address, your name. I'm going to write you a little letter saying glory to God for you. I'm glad for you. And I'll be praying with you add you on to our little prayer list that we do have here so that we can pray for you, man, so that your God can strengthen you more and more and more and more. And remember, always get into a good Bible-based teaching church that's going to teach you how to follow Jesus Christ faithfully, holy, and holy. God bless y'all. I'll see y'all next time.